Wherever you are, wherever you're from, whatever you believe, and whomever you love, Emily and Mike want to welcome you to this celebration of their love for one another. Each of you has given something unique to their lives. Your love and encouragement will forever be appreciated. From every, any direction you traveled, whether your journey was short and simple, or if you ventured across mountains and rivers through tolls and tunnels, or danced your way down this aisle, they thank you for sharing one of life's happiest moments with them. And so, family and friends, at this moment, if there are any of you who know of any just cause as to why these two should not be so united, now is not the time. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you've had like at least six years to say something. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I do have to ask the question. So if any of you do know of anything, please see me after the ceremony and we'll um, make a financial arrangement. Family and friends, thank you. Please be seated. And when we think of love, we sometimes talk about people who deserve one another. We are gathered together to be overjoyed for and with Emily and Mike, two people who deserve one another and who are so wonderfully suited to one another that it is a pure delight for the rest of us to see how incredibly happy two people can be. Of course, they are delighted that you are present to share in this moment of joy with them. As they join their lives in marriage, they also bring you together in a new relationship, creating new bonds of trust and ties of affection. And so, family and friends, I ask, will, uh, will all of you do everything in your power to preserve this marriage? Will all of you who have supported these two in friendship and love now bestow your blessings upon them? And family and friends, before you answer, please allow me to remind you that Emily and Mike are feeding you this afternoon. 
and also that there is an open bar. The, sh the pre-ceremony champagne was just the beginning. So, with that in mind, please show them your very vocal love and support by saying, we will. You are feeding them. Okay, just checking. All right, good. That was the plan. Thank you. Family and friends, will you now please join me in prayer? Eternal God, source of infinite love, bless us with a sense of your indwelling presence as we gather here. Keep us sensitive to the wonder of things that fill our days and give meaning to life. Deepen in us the level of our loving, both for those near and dear to us and for those who, those strangers, need our concern. Especially do we pray your divine blessing on these two who come here in this high moment of their lives. Hear them as they take their promises to each other that they shall pledge their vows with deepest sincerity, knowing full well the meaning of the words they say. And do grant us all, we pray, a heightened sense of the joy of life because we share this moment with them. In your loving spirit, amen. Love, of course, is the reason we are here. But love is such a small word that we use for an idea that is so intense and massive. It's all-encompassing. It teaches, it reaches everyone's life at some point or another and forms and meanings which are varied and diverse. How can this vastness be confined to just one simple syllable? Now, all of us are here because we presume that Mike and Emily love each other. I realize how that sounds, and I say the word presume because the true nature of their love can only be imagined by us. I say that because none of us have heard the sound of their love's voice in their ears, seen that glimmer in their eyes, or felt that rush of excitement that permeates the very core of their being and fills their souls with joy. We are here because we believe in their love, and we put our faith in that belief, and absolutely not because this is an elaborate six-year-long ploy to extract a large number of gifts, cash donations, and gift cards from all of you through the promise of dinner and intoxicating beverages, which we also presume they are paying for. <laughs> now, the true nature of a loving relationship can only be defined by those in that relationship. For some... Love may be felt in the thousands of breakfasts on quiet Sunday mornings, where for others, it's spotting that person at the gym. Some may hear love among the whispered words and tender sighs that decorate their days, where for others, it's singing in the car to their favorite songs and changing the lyrics to something amusing and likely rude. Some may find love in a club or a bar or the old-fashioned way, on Tinder, some may search for that one perfect person or maybe not spend any time at all. Or maybe in the midst of creating a career when boom, your friendly encounters with a certain good looking fellow student teacher in Palmyra, PA, turn into moving with them to Charleston, South Carolina, creating new life together and getting a dog. Some may see love written in the night sky or on a pumpkin, in a field of flowers or in the kitchen. Love can be found in those shared adventures and dreams pursued of grand moments that thrill you to your core, the life-changing, the awe-inspiring, the love-enhancing, or through enduring a tense moment made up of these words, king-size mattress, high winds, Toyota RAV4. Oh, nice. Love, can be <laughs> Love can be found in those small times too, the little day, everyday moments that seem so insignificant, yet at the time mean so much. Because whether it's warm days strolling around Charleston, cool evenings in the front of the TV, or hot, steamy nights of grocery shopping, our love ensures that it is there for us, simply enjoys being in our presence, holding our hand, and breathing the same air. Our love hopes, love cares, love snuggles and allows us to breathe and puts others before themselves. Love listens, love shares. Love teaches us to simplify, to take charge of the things we can, accept those things we cannot to let the rest fall into place. Love is hardworking and diligent. It accepts and moves on. It listens and trusts, gives second chances and seeks to understand. It lives for us, believes in us, wants only the best for us. It's our traveling, walking, shopping, teaching, learning, laughing, weightlifting, furniture flipping, new restaurant trying, Hawaii flight home missing, sleep deprived, pumpkin patch, marriage proposing companion, our world, our light, our greatest friend, a doting husband, a nurturing wife and the most wonderful parent 
our pup Reese could possibly ask for. I'm sorry, that was a very awkward place for me to pause. <laughs> it shows us that openness and vulnerability are the key to connection, that trust and communication are the foundation on which love can stand, that growth is only possible when we know where our roots are planted. And love, our love, looks us into the eyes today, takes our hand, and says, I knew I loved you before I met you. I think I dreamed you into life. I knew I loved you before I met you. I have been waiting all my life. <laughs> <laughs> now, if it's true that there are as many minds as there are heads, then there are as many forms of love as there are hearts. And so, Emily and Mike, today I ask you to make these promises before all of us. And you may answer these questions with either yes, or we will, or mm-hmm. <laughs> Mike and Emily, will you always trust in each other as the people you are today and the people you will become? We will. Good. <laughs> will you always laugh together, joke together, and keep a playful nature? Will you always show affection and remind each other of the love you share? <laughs> Mike, will you promise to accompany Emily through the travels of life, whether it's taking her for ice cream or to far-flung exotic locales like Target at least once a week, to be her lifelong designated shopping bag holder, and to view Emily with love and adoration no matter how long or her ba how bad her blonde moments may get? And Emily, will you promise to be there for Mike through the moments of angst, anger, and triumph during all Eagles, Flyers, and Phillies games? Practice patience and selective hearing no matter how much he yells at the TV during said sports games. And will you promise to live with Mike's dad jokes even though you've already heard them 18 times? Good. Emily and Mike, will you always strive to love each other the way you do today no matter what life brings your way? May we have the rings? Can each of you take each other's rings? In the long and revered tradition of marriage, rings have come to symbolize eternal love and lasting union. They are tokens of faith, trust, and hope, and serve as tangible representations of this law of life, that as we give to each other, we receive from each other. Emily and Mike, as you give of your devotion and love to your partner, it should be returned and enhanced and multiplied. Mike, you have Emily's ring. Place it on her finger now. And now holding her hand and looking into her eyes, please say, I love you. Yes. Okay. Emily, today I make a promise. Emily, today I make a promise. To take you as my only love. To take you as my only love. To stand by your side. To stand by your side. To listen when you speak. To listen when you speak. To comfort you when you cry. To comfort you when you cry. To join your laughter with my own. To join your laughter with my own. Will you take this ring and be my wife? Will you take this ring and be my wife? I do. And now Emily, you have Mike's ring. Place it on his finger. It's there. Good. Yep. It worked. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I realize if you don't tap it, it doesn't work right. You, you're right. Good. <laughs> Emily, please look into Mike's eyes and say, Mike, today I make a promise. Mike, today I make a promise. To take you as my only love. To take you as my only love. To stand by your side. To stand by your side. To listen when you speak. To listen when you speak. To comfort you when you cry. To comfort you when you cry. To join your laughter with my own. To join your left with my own. Will you take this ring and be my husband? Will you take this ring and be my husband? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Emily and Mike, may you find constant reward and challenge as you pursue the ongoing adventure of learning who you are and where you want to go. May you always have a special sense of your mission in life together, and may you never tire of the endless possibilities of exploring your shared existence. And long, long years from now, may you look at one another and be able to say, with you, I have lived the life I have always wanted to live. With you, I have become the person 
I have always longed to be. And so, since you have pledged yourselves in the presence of this company and have spoken the words which unite your lives, I now do take great joy in declaring that you are husband and wife. Mike, Emily, you may kiss. Very nice, family and friends, will you now please rise and join me in celebration as we greet our newlyweds, Mr. and Mrs. Michael and Emily Polita! That's your next point in life. You gotta make you gotta at least make 59, 59 or 60 would be great. We love you guys. And we love you dearly. Yes. Emily and Mike, you and and we just want to say that we're really thrilled that you guys are married, getting married, or got married, and that Michael's part of the officially part of the family. Thank you so much. Good. Right on. Nice. Who's next? Go ahead, Dan. Just want to wish Emily and Mike the most happiest lifetime together. I hope you have a beautiful life together. You got a beautiful dog, it's a beautiful wedding, beautiful day, beautiful family, and uh, I hope it's only better from here. Hi Emily and Mike, wish you all the best. Emily, Mike, enjoyed everything today and felt great watching you guys do your vows, and uh, I wish you a long and happy life together. One, two, three, pose! Woo! One, two, three, pose! Woo! And one, two, three, pose!
so most of my family members know that I like to talk. <laughs> I tell a lot of stories. Most of the details are true. Um, so I, I'm going to say my, my piece, I guess. But I'll keep it short, honestly. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> So first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming, right? I mean, um, people come, and I said this last night, people come from travel far and wide to be here, and, and we're so appreciative that you would share in the, um, the marriage the union of Emily and Mike. Um, it's a, a tribute to them that you're here celebrating with us. Um, another thing I'd like to say is I'd like to personally acknowledge Emily and Mike's work. They're, they spend endless hours organizing, preparing events for this weekend, and uh, to give us a chance to celebrate with them. And, and probably the most special event that could ever happen in their lives, other than maybe a birth of a child. So um, salute to them for all the hard work they do. That's just a... <laughs> maybe that's just wishful thinking on my part. But So I do have two stories I'd like to share. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm doing it. Yeah, they're short. They're short. Come on, come on. Stay, hang, in, hang in with me, right, guys? Hang in. Yeah. There we <laughs> Just two. <laughs> okay. So the, so the first one is every year um, for Father's Day, since it's Father's Day weekend, every year um, Emily, <clears throat> see if I can hold it together here, um, provides me with creative, appreciated gifts. Uh, so one year she um, gave me a ribbon of baseballs, and or a a wreath of baseballs. The ribbons were orange and black, which are my, f I, I love baseball, and I love the San Francisco Giants, which are colors orange and black. So that was pretty special. Another year she gave me a, um, a carrier, like that would hold soda, six pack, that would hold soda or beer. In this case, there were soda bottles, and my favorite soda, which is cream soda, which honestly I'm not allowed to drink anymore. <clears throat> but um, in, in the bottles, she put sweets that I like and nuts that I like. And then she put the caps on it to make it look like it was brand new. So last year, she, um, she said, let's go to San Francisco for Father's Day. And she arranged it. And uh, we had a great time, Sue and Mike and, uh, and Emily. So I don't think I would have done that trip, but she encouraged me to do it. She said, Dad, it's Father's Day. This is your team. They're home. Let's do it. So we did. So my point to this story is, here it is Father's Day, and the greatest gift I could ever receive is this union. <laughs> this is monumental in their life and, and my life and Sue's life and our whole families. Um, so she can't top this. <laughs> um, so at least I can't imagine she'd ever talk about this. <laughs> All right, so the, so the last story is, um, that was pretty short. So the, la the last story is um, when Emily and Mike first met, <clears throat> they met, uh, obviously, the student teaching and at the Palmyra High School, and, um, and they, they started dating that summer, and I really didn't get a chance to meet Mike. Mike was in Philadelphia, and Emily was home in Hummelstown. So I met him on a, a few occasions. And before you know it, they left Pennsylvania and they took these jobs in Charleston teaching. So um, Emily would, uh, would stay with her um, Aunt Barb and Uncle Randy and, and their family. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> Mike lived with some friends down there. And on one occasion, um, when I was visiting, uh, Randy pulled me aside and he said, um, <clears throat> Mike's a great guy, and he treats Emily right. I really trust his judgment, and, uh, and I took that view, his view to, to heart, and it turns out that it's all true. He is a great guy. So, so in closing, I'm, I'm pleased to say I'm blessed with an extraordinary daughter, an extraordinary Okay, daughter. before I read the prayer that I wrote, um, probably a few of you coming through that door there noticed uh, a lady in distress. Okay, 
That's Jane Miglianico, and I want us to pray for her, please, you know, silently to yourself, but Jane is wife of Diane's brother, Pauline's other cousin, John. Um, she was out in the sun, you know, she's a little older like me. I'm going to guess, I'm no, I'm no medical person, but I'm going to guess heat stroke. Had some experience with that myself. But anyway, when it hits you, you go down, okay? She hit her head, that's what counts. She hit her head on the pavers. So the ambulance come, came, checked her out. They decided the best thing to do was take her away. So anyway, if you would all please, you know, send up a word or two for her that she's well. Heavenly Father, please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, you are the one and only living God, the author of life, the God that is not distant from us, but the God who reaches out to us and wants to be involved with us because he cares about us. We are very blessed and happy to be here today, and we are most definitely very joyous about this wonderful occasion of the marriage of Emily and Michael. The concept of marriage and all that goes with it was created by you, Father, as the foundation of the family, the basic building block of a healthy society. So we thank you for bringing Michael and Emily together in marriage. We pray for this marriage. If it follows a path similar to most marriages, there will be happy times and times of growth, but also sooner or later, circumstances that will stress the marriage. We will always be pleased and celebrate those happy times. But I pray that you, Father, will guide and encourage and strengthen Michael and Emily during those more difficult times. And we are confident in you that if they follow your guidance during those times, they will come out of them stronger and happier and closer than ever before. Verses four through seven of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 of your Holy Bible are often quoted at weddings. They read, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. God, please help Michael and Emily, and certainly all of us here, me included, to grasp the real meaning of those words, namely that love is not simply a noun. It's not simply a feeling. Feelings come and go. Feelings tend to focus on me. Rather, in that scripture passage, love is a verb. It's all about action, not just about feelings. In that passage from 1 Corinthians, Father, love is something you want us to do, whether we feel like it or not. Love, the verb, is always about seeking the best for the other person. It's not about seeking what's best for me. We may be tired or busy or have hurt feelings or be angry and not feel like acting in love. But acting in love is exactly what your word, Father, tells you you want from us. Again, Father, we thank you for this marriage of Emily and Michael and for this joyous celebration. I pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Emily has this remarkable power to always be available and accessible to those in need. She prioritizes her relationships and will drop what she is doing in a heartbeat to be there for you. As someone who's notorious for taking days, if not weeks, to return text messages and phone calls, I'm forever amazed and inspired by her ability to be incredibly productive and always have time to answer the phone, immediately respond to a text, or drive 45 minutes to meet you for a frozen yogurt date on a weeknight. She loves others deeply, selflessly, and unconditionally. M is also a true yes person. She loves to have fun and will never shy away from pursuing creative and spontaneous adventures. This is a trait that she possessed in her youth and continues to carry with her. One of my favorite adventure stories with M happened when we were in our tween years. We were staying at my grandmother's cabin in Boone, North Carolina, and we decided that we were going to go on a run the next day. A plain old daylight run sounded a little boring to us, though, to, so to spice things up and ensure an adrenaline rush, we decided that we would wake up at 4 a.m. while it was still dark out, climb out our bedroom window, <laughs> and go on a run without anyone knowing. Our common sense kicked in at some point, and while that didn't deter us from pursuing this plan, 
It did inspire us to leave a note for my mother and grandmother, letting them know of our whereabouts. <laughs> However, for some reason, we decided that it was best to write the note on construction paper using 10 plus different colored markers so that, <laughs> so that the final product looked distinctly like a ransom note. <laughs> After hitting snooze a few times, the run did go off without a hitch, and we even managed to evade the ruckus dogs that often chase passersby at all hours of the day. I've always believed that M would need a life partner who could keep up with her. Someone who knows how to have fun and is always on the lookout for the next adventure. Someone who cares deeply for others. Someone who pursues growth for themselves and supports growth in others. Someone who has dreams as big as M does and can pursue them with confidence and perseverance. When I first met Mike, I immediately noticed that he possessed many of these qualities. Mike is unfailingly kind, has a gift for making others feel seen and valued, and possesses a true entrepreneurial spirit. In my early interactions with Mike, I could tell that he would match M well and support her as she pursues the best and truest version of herself. Mike's love for M was made abundantly clear to me as he recounted one of their early encounters. It occurred during their student teaching days. I didn't ask for permission to share this story, so hopefully this is fine. <laughs> and involves M sipping coffee, Mike making her laugh, and M spitting her coffee out onto a right white pants right before parent-teacher conferences. The encounter, as it was told to me, <laughs> ended with M standing in front of an industrial-sized fan trying to dry off the coffee stain before parents showed up. While hilarious, what I remember most about that story is how Mike could not stop smiling as he told me about it. It was a deep, contagious, from the soul smile through which you could feel his love and admiration for M. He was glowing in a way that assured me that he would care for her no matter what life threw at them. M and Mike, you all inspire others with your love and your approach to life. And M, while I will forever be your adventure companion, I'm so glad that you found a partner who will also enthusiastically pursue adventure with you. I can't wait to see where the future takes you all, and I'm so glad that you cho chose all of us to be along for the ride. Cheers. Cheers and cheers. <laughs> you look good in that suit. Thank you. Hi, right, good evening, everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Joe Gladnick. Um, Mike doesn't really understand the meaning of a best man because he has two of them, so we'll kind of figure that out as we go. Best men. <laughs> so um, Mike and I grew up, uh, we met in middle school, and we were best friends uh, all through that time, uh, whether it was playing video games in the basement at my parents' house, uh, cutting weight for wrestling, in his case at least, I didn't need to cut anything. Um, <laughs> or whether it was just, you know, spending sonic trips, you know, hours just talking about life, talking about the future, hoping that, you know, life would turn out the way we did. Um, the first time I met Emily, though, uh, is, is definitely a fun one. Uh, so I was down in, in Millersville visiting Mike and, and hanging out at the house and, you know, just having conversation with everybody and I started talking to Emily. And, you know, we small talk, all well and good. And, First, you know, I'm like, oh, who do you, you know, who do you know here? She goes, oh, I'm Mike's girlfriend. Okay, didn't know that. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> good to know. So we keep talking all along. She goes, oh, who do you know at this party? And we go, oh, I'm Mike's best friend. <laughs> I have no idea who you are. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so appreciate that, Mike. All well and good. But shortly after that, Mike comes over and goes, oh, Joe, I see you met Emily. And instantly, his face lights up, and so does hers. And honestly, the smiles between the two of them was just, you know, you just knew instantaneously that that's, you know, they were madly in love with each other. So really, you know, moving forward, I hope that smile never goes away from either of you because it lights up everybody in this room. And, you know, we're all super happy to be here. And thank you guys for everything. And we hope for nothing but the best in the future for you. So. I am anxious. I started this speech with jokes about Joe and, you know, poking fun at what Mike and Emily can do and all these other things, but I, how could I possibly piece together enough words, syllables, clauses, conjunction, functions, any of those to describe how much you two, Emily and Mike, mean to me, mean to them, mean to us? <sighs> Can't do it. So I did what I would do in any other situation. I asked Mike for help. I said, hey, Mike, if you could describe Emily, her, her fa your favorite thing about her, could you send it to me? Um, and 
It's an impossible task. I'm sorry I did that to you a week before your wedding. Uh, yeah, uh, just boil down your soulmate into a single phrase and just give it to me and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it. And he said, of course, I have to pick just one? No, you don't. I reassured him, it wasn't a test. Emily didn't ask me to ask you that. I just wanted to know because you could honestly pick as many as you wanted. And I will say every single one of them here. Um, I actually have a list, it's about 55 long if everyone's ready for that. Uh, engage with me in any way and I'll tell you them. But uh, he, wanted, he was nervous because he wanted to get the words right and he knew that he couldn't because Emily meant too much to him. And as I parsed through his answer, his speech, I got it down to Emily is always selfless, which Grace mentioned before. She's always putting others before herself. She's considerate, she's patient, and she's passionate. All tenets of what I would describe as the most beautiful love you could ever have with somebody else. And to you, Emily, this one's for you. Sorry, Mike, get out. I gotta thank you because you, more than anyone else here, more than me, more than Joe, more than any of these guys, have helped Mike blossom into the man that I always knew he could be. <sighs> no, seriously, physically, mentally, you've pushed him so far, you pushed him out of his comfort zone to join a new career, his ambitions, his love, and most importantly, you've pushed him to believe. And belief is hard. Belief in himself, belief in you, belief in your love. A man with the power of belief is untenable, but with a woman like you beside him, <sighs> you'll be unstoppable. There's no one else on this earth or in this plane of existence more suited and deserving of Mike than you, Emily. And I thank God that you two met, fell in love, and brought us all together here. And I know you hate poetry, Polita, but I'm just gonna leave you with one right here. <laughs> more than fame, more than power, more than money, give me truth and give me love. And that's what you guys do. Strawberry sun